Hello, everybody. I am Angry Bird. Back with a new Steel Division 2 cast for you today. This is Steel Division League Division 1. We have Charles versus Sean. And I think this is the first match we're seeing Charles here on Steel Division. Certainly this season of Steel Division League. I'm not sure if this is the first time he's on my channel can't quite remember I've done quite a lot of videos now <laughs> but one thing we are seeing a brand new income here flatline the new income type released in fate of Finland 130 points in a 130 points in B and 130 points in C Charles is gonna see whether he can use that flatline income to flatline Sean and I'm really interested in this match as well. We have first Lovas versus Kurok 559. I think both of these divisions are much loved by the community. So let's see how they do today. Let's have a look at the decks on the left hand side in red. We have Charles playing first Lovas on flatline. Now, first Lovas, I think they're well known for their fantastic infantry, particularly the Husarok. Um, Charles has 9 in A, he has 18 in B, and a whopping 36 in C phase. The Hungarian infantry of first Lovas is particularly strong, but they do have weaknesses elsewhere. Uh, they do lack a lot of heavy tanks, but then coming up against Kurok 559, that shouldn't be a major issue. I believe Kurok do get access to two Tigers. They're going to be the big ones, but Lovas, they do get options to take out those Tigers. Uh, the, the best is going to be the JU-87 D5 cluster plane in the air tab. Two of those in A phase for Charles. We'll see where they come out, because if I were Charles, I'd want to hang on to them until I see those Tigers. I think one of the, the units of note is the Jagdpanzer 38Ts in the anti-tank tab. Six of them in B phase. They're really the heaviest kind of equipment that the first Lovas get access to. After that, we're looking at the uh, three off maps in C phase. They are particularly strong. Although, not so many planes in this division. Usually, I think we tend to see a few more planes in First Lovas, but Charles opting only for the four JU-87 D5s in A phase. Let's pop over and have a look at Sean's deck. He is on the right-hand side in blue. He's playing Kurok 559 on his much-loved balanced income. And what is it about Kurok? It's Shupo time. <laughs> Shupo spam is Kurok's secret weapon, although not really so secret. 12 Shupos in A phase, 24 Shupos in B phase, and 36 Shupos in C phase, a total of 143 infantry units in Sean's deck. I didn't quite make a note of the number in Charles's deck, but this is, I think, a relatively conservative amount of infantry uh, for what Kurok can put out. Sean does have the Tigers. He is waiting till C phase, and actually he has four of them at two star. Um, I'm, I'm wondering here whether the... No, this game must be post Fate of Finland patch because Charles is playing flatline income. So we finally reached uh, the Fate of Finland patch and hopefully the UI changes won't affect this cast too much as well. I may have to tinker as we go through the cast. I will try and do as little as possible, but obviously a hell of a lot of UI changes came with the Fate of Finland patch. Um, I'll have to get used to how they look when I'm casting a game and what is 
you know, the most entertaining for you guys. So, Kurok do get access to four tags and E-phase. I don't know whether that's um, a buff. I thought it used to be two, but it is four in this deck, so... Whether it is a buff or not, they've definitely got four tigers in C phase. And that could be, you know, that could be some trouble for Charles. I think Sean also does have access to a healthy amount of 80 gun planes, but he's not really going to need too many against the Chirans. They will come in handy against the Jagdpanzers, but also on this map as well, I'm sure he can get some of his 36, 37 mils into place and also the pack 40s. I mean, it's a tough one to call between the two decks. I think Sh Sean with Kurok has access to a lot more vehicles that are much stronger than the Chirans. He has to worry about the Jagdpanzers, but there are only a limited number of them, and he does have four Tigers as well. I think I'd have to give this one to Kurok over Lovas, but it will be interesting to see how this plays out. I think Sean as well will be the favourite up against Charles. Uh, Sean, you know, considered the best in the world at this game. Charles, a fantastic player, deservedly in Division 1. We'll see how he handles coming up against Sean. But, you know, Sean has to be in the favourite in this matchup. Okay, the game is now underway. So let's recap. Charles on the left hand side in red playing first Luvas on flatline income. And first problem, I can't bring up the uh, arrows to show us where his deployments are going. So first issue there. <laughs> and Sean on the right hand side in blue, he is playing Kurok 559 on balanced income and again like i say i cannot bring up the deployments to see exactly where he's going it looks like the first encounter may well be in the center with the langzarok of charles up against the ss shupo it may well also be in the northern side here sean has a lot of units going into this town let's have a look here charles has some units in there as well and Sean has the Landers Führer. Definitely going to need those to buff up all of these Landa Schutzen. Supporting fire now coming from the SPW ADGZ. And it looks like Sean is going to take over this little town area on the northern side quite effectively. The Ru Hamarazok do open fire now, but they are going to get taken down very quickly. And Sean does pretty much get control of this area. This is the main engagement focus at the moment, and Charles definitely has to clear this up. Playing a flatline income. Sean can afford to be a little bit more aggressive than he normally would be up against a Vanguard income. But Charles does still have the income advantage in A phase. Saying that, he only has it in A phase. So, Sean now 59 up early on is really cementing himself. He, he's putting himself in a fantastic position here. Charles needs to attack in A phase and put himself in a winning position if he's going to hold on because he's going to be down on income in B and C phase. I'm kind of surprised he's chosen this flatline income against a balanced income. It seems to me that flatline against balanced is possibly even worse than, than Vanguard against balanced or not even worse, but 
worse than Vanguard against Balance. Charles does have the 40Ms, currently does take out two SPWs and brings in two JU-87D5s to strike these aircraft. Sean does have a flak 36, 36 already on the field. Down comes the first bomber onto this tightly grouped pair of units. In comes the second and down goes one of the pioneers. In the center ground, the SPW ADGZ is pinning down the Hussar Golosoroshok, but the other Hussarocks and the leader is able to make itself across the open ground into the light forest, currently tackling a Sekirungs. Sean's going to want to make sure he's careful how he uses that SPW though, because the Hussarocks and the leader do have 80 weapons on them. I can't, unfortunately I can't show any orders whatsoever now. I do not have the ability to press shift to show the orders. So, unfortunately, I, it does take away some of the ability for me to find out, you know, what the two players are doing. You know, how they're microing the units. Up in the northern side is C... Sorry, a 39M C Sabre has come forwards. But I don't think it's too much of a threat. It does take out one of the um, infantry guns there. There is a pack 36, 37 micro in through the forest trying to take out that sea saber. Down in the southern side, Charles has pushed forwards and picked up a flag here. Sean has the 1311 currently up on points and will win the game in 27 minutes time but Sean does pick up a flag here possible resurgence in the southern side in the central area I think he has picked up this flag as well but he is tackling with the SPW ADGZ he's not close enough with the Hoosarox to get those AT grenades off he is now it looks like he is falling back the leader unit that have the Faust Patron these have a 120 meter range so he could actually take out this spw with the leaders let's look to see if that does happen looks like sean has spotted the leaders they are going to open fire there are six men in this squad so they definitely survive and they do take down the spw there up on the northern side though charles has to find a way to hold back sean's push with the lads of shoots and on the northern side currently has one of the mgs i think that's I, ca I cannot pronounce that unit name, unfortunately, and I've not heard it pronounced myself, but it is possibly equivalent to a Maxim. I think it's one of the old, maybe World War I machine guns. I'm really unfamiliar with that unit. Down on the southern side, we do have a Panzer II C in here now, but there is a 40M as well. And Sean's backing off that Panzer II C. There is a 36, 37 mil in there in a very close position to these infantry, but he has the SPWs that are scouting things out. Charles definitely doesn't have this southern area fully under his control at the moment, but he, he does have a nice position. The 36-37mm is going to open fire against the Turan 1s coming up the hill. But they're going to reply very quickly and easily take out that 36-37mm. Sean's pushing forwards once again with the Panzer II C, but there is still the 40M there. The SBWs do find the Huzzerox and are opening fire. Charles is going to have to mic micro them back into the forest if he wants those Huzzerox to survive. His infantry up in the northern side, they have been cut off in the central side, sorry. But I want to concentrate on this attack in the southern area. I want to see what happens when these Charam 1s get into position. Can they take out this Panzer 2C? They should do so. They have the ability to penetrate and they are coming in at close range. Down goes that Panzer II C. Took a few shots, but it did go down fairly effectively. 
Sean is bringing in another 36, 37 mil. Like I say, I can't tell you where he's going to bring that in. Somewhere on the edge. Okay, so he's dropped it there on the edge of the forest. In comes the HS129. Will that be able to get shots on? Yes, they can see the vehicle. Wow! Does not kill a Charan 1. Wow, that HS129 did not kill a Charan 1. Very surprising. Very surprising. 20 shots with the 30mm AP cannon. I mean, I haven't seen this these decks in a long time, so I'm not quite sure whether that's me. Maybe mistaking this HS129 for a, a better vehicle. But things have changed in the Fate of Finland patch. A lot of AP, AP mechanics. I wouldn't say a lot of AP mechanics. The AP mechanics have changed. They have altered. There are a lot less criticals now in this uh, version of the game, in this new patch. A lot less criticals. Which I think really helped out the um, AT gun planes. The amount of criticals that they could fire and, and affect onto enemy units was kind of the cause for them to take out a lot of vehicles because eventually they'd get a crit that would just, you know, cause the vehicle to explode. So things have settled down a little bit more, but Sean... Oh, uh, Sean is 12-12. I, I could have sworn that just said 14-10. It is 13-11 now to Sean. I think this one flag was briefly taken by Charles for a moment. But we are now into B phase, and that is it for income advantage in terms of Charles. He had 300 points income advantage in A. He's going to lose 100 points in B phase, so it is still relatively tight. But in C phase, he will lose... 400 points every 10 minutes so from this point onwards sean has the income advantage he's already in a he's already in the lead he has probably about 10 minutes up on charles so he just has to trade you know one for one at this point and he should relatively comfortably win out in this game the hs129 just flying around in the top there i'm not quite sure whether it was targeting like i say i cannot use the shift command to show you what that plane is targeting i don't know whether that's an option that i can change in my options in my interface options menu but we're halfway for a cast unfortunately i don't want to start playing around with things i'm gonna have to do it off screen Up in the northern side, Charles has pushed Sean back, but Sean still has control of this uh, central area. Charles looking to exploit the southern side, though, with the Louvas Felderatok. If that's how you pronounce them. Uh, they are the inf uh, recon units here, so fairly just standard infantry squads with the recon. Um, the recon icon, the, re the recon specialism. <laughs> they are basically just infantry squads, but because they are a recon squad, they don't hold the front line forwards. He is bringing in forwards more Huzarox and Huzar Golosorashok. The MG42 of Sean is not in a fantastic position here. I imagine he migrated it back out of that church tower. But it is kind of... It is open to attack from a frontal charge. Sean is moving forwards, Flammenwerfers, through the forest. Should easily take care of this one man who's our Gorosoroshok that's left. Although the Lovas... Felderatok do now open fire. Charles trying to micro away that one man, but succumbing to instant death. Wow, look at Sean bringing in four flak 38 20 mils. I can't tell you where that's going to go right now. 
and usually brings them near his commander. I'm guessing they're going to go somewhere down here near his leader, possibly in this kind of position. Nope, they're turning up north. <laughs> I have to, like, this is guessing time. Maybe he's just going to drop them back here because he can't charge them forwards. They're, they're, they're going to get taken out. Yeah, I think he is just kind of going to drop them there. Up on the northern side, a lot of SS Shupo coming in from nor from Sean in the northern side. Some 80 mil mortars. Going to join the others from Charles. So they bring out a lot of mortars. And I think that's a good call. Could definitely do with some help taking out the number of infantry units that Kurut can bring out. And there's a hell of a lot more infantry units on the way as well. Charles has pushed forwards into this central hill. There is a unit of Rona Pioneer still here. They should go down though. They can't take four squads. They are having to back off. The Landesfuhrer is under trouble as well. There is a pack 36 that might get discovered and Charles does take control of this hill. Brings it back to a 12-12. So trading well I think in the center game. Down goes a C39M. But the SPW is going to go down to the Chiran 1 there. There is some AA on the field. There is a Nimrod in there now. 3640M Nimrod. This is a pretty, pretty good in, um, AA piece that Luvas do get access to. So I think in the center side, center area, Charles, ooh, coming under fire from the Flak 37. This could be pretty deadly for an infantry unit. Ooh, down goes some of the Shupo in their transport. I think to the 40M back here. And the rest of them could be in trouble. The smoke from the Landersfuhrer, I think, covered the retreat of the Huserok there. Sean actually helping out his opponent. The Hoosarocks are pushing forward. Surely we'll see the Pack 36, but they are again coming under fire from the Flak 36 here. I'd like to see some artillery coming down. I'm assuming that's where this is going. Yes, Charles responding immediately with this artillery fire, and the Commandant is under trouble here because he's right in that line of fire. Sean, Sean microing that Commandant away, and it's a pretty good job that he's done that. But the SS Shupo do make it up to the top of the hill, and wow, just look at the infantry units coming in here. Charles has no way of holding on with the four squads he's got in at the moment. He needs to get some artillery in here. If he can mortar this position, he may well have a chance. I can't show you where they're going. We'll have to wait and find out. I assume they're going to come down onto this position. Yes, they are. And the Landers Fuhrer that Sean protected earlier with the smoke comes back alive, giving the Upvet back to the Shupo, preventing them from surrendering. So Sean, fantastic use of his Fuhrer unit there, saving it, keeping it alive for another day and another fight. Maybe not another day, but definitely another fight. And look at all of the MG fire just pouring down onto this Hungarian infantry. Wow. Charles needs to get infantry reinforcements in there. I'm assuming this is where the Hozorocks are going. We have some JU-87 D5s coming in as well. Did I say Sean? I may have said Sean there. I meant Charles. More mortar fire. This is exactly what Charles needs. Just hammer this area with mortar fire. It's his best bet right now for holding on, but he may well come under some counter battery at some point. Down comes the D5, just pins everything in the area. There are now two Flak 36s up here. Those D5s might struggle in future areas. Ooh, one of them gets shot down. The other one strain over the four 20 mils in the southern side. That may well go down as well. Yes, it does. Oh, two fighters down. 
The AA is different on this patch, but make no mistake, AA is still strong. Two Flak 37s there, up vetted by the LVF Commandant. Three Flak 38 20 mils in that one spot as well, not even up vetted, all combined to take down those two JU 87s. Let's look back down to the southern side. It looks like things have stabilized down in this area. Charles did not manage to push onto this further flag. Sean does have the 1311 right now. Although Sean, uh, sorry, Charles is aggressing into this southern central compound. Sean has artillery of his own now. Wow, look at the Hooserox right behind enemy lines sorry it's not artillery it's an ig 290 firing down onto the hooser rocks mortify coming in from charles that's a good idea there's only two ss shupo left in this little compound and i think charles will have that one Ordering in some more supply trucks for his mortars. Definitely the right decision right now from Charles. Look at the number of light infantry based units that Sean has. Just so many filling up the entire screen. There are some 81 mort mil mortars in here. Although they haven't fired a single shot. I was just checking there. <laughs> So things have changed with counter battery as well. Mortars can no longer be counter batteried, uh, but they can't counter battery either. It's only the mainline artillery pieces like the uh, 31M 149mm howitzer. So a bit of a change in this patch. It should make mortars more effective. I'm not sure if 120mm mortars are affected by that. I cannot remember off the top of my head. I think they I think they are still classed as a mortar, so they cannot counter battery or be counter batteried. But I think they did suffer a nerf to ensure that things don't get out of balance due to that change. So Sean does now stop firing his mortars at the machine gun position. And those two Shupo, they're still hanging on. I think Sean definitely in control of this match so far. This northern central position. I mean, Charles has just not been able to get him out of that position. And that's the flag that's giving him the 13-11 right now. Sean just needs to hold on to that flag. He also has this one, which is Charles's flag originally, but then Charles has the one down here, which is counteracting that. More mortar fire. Oh, counter battery in the uh, 81 mil mortars there. That is automatic. You know, that is assigned counter battery by Charles, as far as I understand it. Manual counter battery. <laughs> More mortars coming in from Sean. A lot more artillery onto the field now. We are now into C phase. Sean has that 170 points a minute income. He has 40 minute, 40 points every tick more than Charles does. A hell of a lot of Churan 1s coming into this central area. I wish I could show where they're all going. And kind of maybe assuming they're going to come through this area here. Try and catch Sean off guard. A lot of infantry coming into the southern side from Sean now as well. I think he's going to try and push back this southern side. Yes, the Shupos go off return fire. Everything is pushing forwards now. This may surprise Charles because there's been no movement in that southern side for some time. But we do see the th first Jagdpanzer 38T onto the field. Will we see a tiger come in from Sean? Do 
Just a massed assault in the southern side right now. And it, just, it looks like these Turans did split up and go to different locations. I'd be interested to know where this Jagdpanzer 38T is going. I'm, I'm kind of assuming it might go down the central road as a usual place for it to go. It may well also come onto this top area. Oh, we do already have a Jagdpanzer 38T here, so it wasn't the first one. Oh, the 40M engaging the T-34 at close range. It's getting the crossfire from the Turan 1s as well. So it's currently showing side armor to that 40M, but it may well get taken out. No, it does just take out the T-34, but there is another one here. Sean does have another one to help him attack forwards with. There is the SPW as well. He's going to wait for the Shupo to overtake the T-34, and it's the right call. No, it's going to start engaging with the Turan 1s right up the other side of the map. It looks like this Southern push, though, is going to come through. And uh, Sean does pick up the flag down here. In comes the HS-129. I think it was targeting that Turan 1, but it was just taken out by the T-34 down here. In comes a fighter for Charles. I'd be expecting an off-map at some point, possibly onto this Southern side, because there is a lot of units down here that would be right in the vicinity of an, an off-map. Charles attacking the anti-air units of Sean with the 80mm mortars. Does take down quite a few of them. Actually, all of them do go down. Just definitely using his artillery really well. The H wow, a HS129, two JU87G1s. This could be some pretty big strikes. Ooh, finally the Turan one goes down. Let's have a look at the others. Another one down, and another one down. The JU87s definitely have a better chance at taking them out than the HS129s. They have the extra seven millimeters of penetration, or well, the seven millimeters, the seven millimeter. Uh, shells so 140 millimeters of penetration whereas the hs129 only has 95 millimeters of penetration this southern side finally being responded to by charles uh, the spw has gone a long way but i think it will go down to the two Turan ones i think sean was trying to discover the mortar units back here or, or maybe he was just trying to push as far as he could possibly go see what was there The Hussar Gullasorishok are surrounded. There is a T-34 here as well, but it's just out of range to fire on those infantry units. Wow, look at this. The Pag 36 37 mil is literally passing by the Felderatok. And it's not opening fire. It's on hold fire. But they are spotting the unit, allowing the Hussar Gullasorishok to open fire. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Ha ha ha. Fantastic. In comes the off map. We called it. And it's going to go right onto this spot. Yeah, we do get to see the um, placement of that off map. We are on the current patch. <laughs> so we finally get to see it. Charles retreating out of that area. In, and uh, Sean will have seen that off map. So he knows it's going to come down. Oh, in comes the ME109 G6. Will he get the kill? Oh, it will. It will. It did get the kill there. Wow. That is a massive blow to Charles. Just one use of the off map. Massive blow. We're waiting for this off map to come in. Here it comes. Oh, <laughs> everything falling back. Oh, the, the leader's lucky to survive there. Oh, down they go. Down go the infantry as well. Sean pushing in with the Turan 1. It's very risky, very dangerous. Another unit of infantry there, but most of the Shupos do survive. Being chased down by the Turan 1, though, will it make it? I 
I think it's going to survive. And that Charam 1 might expose himself. No, he is staying put. I was worried it was going to expose himself out the other side to the T-34. But Charles does hang on to the area for the moment. But he did lose one of the off maps. 125 points for those off maps. Two more get called in. Charles going heavy on those off maps now. Oh my days, look at this ME109. It came out of nowhere. It does kill the off map once again. <laughs> oh ho ho. The Fockle with 190 F8 is chasing. But is it gonna get there? I, I think it's too far back. And wow, look at the uh look at the route. It didn't recognize where that ME109 went. And yeah, the fighter routing is a little bit of an issue on the current patch right now. So another off map coming in, but again, 125 points for this one off map because the plane had only used one charge. I want to wait for this one to come back down again. Here it comes. Yeah, everything falling back once again. Will he get the kills? Oh, is Charam 1 almost taking a direct hit there? Oh, another SS Shupo Fiora moves forwards, but immediately lose four, man, four men in that artillery bombardment. I just love the off maps in Steel Division 2. Absolutely fantastic to see. Focke-Wolf 190F8, tangling with the ME109G6. JU87G1 is coming in now. Can't see what that's targeting. Oh, it must be this Turan 1 here. Surely is going to get the kill. Yeah, it does so easily. Oh, and the ME109G6 is chasing the Focke-Wolf, but it is going to get away, and Sean calls that one back. 14.10 to Sean currently. Eight minutes left on the clock. And... Sean is surely going to win this game out. I cannot see Charles coming back right now. SS Shupo right on the front line. Charles bringing in more Shupos to uh, reinforce this southern push. And also in the central area as well. More Flak 38s to replace the previous ones. Sean does have some SFH-396R, some Russian 122 mils on the field. Unfortunately, I can't see what that's firing at. I'm wondering whether it's ta targeting the artillery at the back, probably on counter-battery. It looks like that's what's happening. Charles investing more into the northern side. He's trying to push into this northern central area once again. He's getting close this time. I'm not sure whether he's going to make it though. There is still a lot of Shupos to go through. Sean is almost completely back to the same position he was at before the off-map strikes come in. He does capture the flag. 59 for Sean right now. 3 minutes 20 left on the clock. And wow, look at this. Down goes the artillery gun for Charles. More Shupos coming into the centre. And I think Sean has this one wrapped up now. 3 minutes left on the clock. Surely there's no way back for Charles. Ooh, down goes a, uh, was that a supply truck that went down there? I'm just wondering what got that kill. Something got that kill. I'm assuming it might, it must have been this 36 here up on the top.
Sean still has a hold of this northern central area. He's had it from the very start of the game. More mortar fire coming down as well, but there's so many infantry units. You know, you take you take you take out one, and in comes another four to replace them. It must have been that pack 36 that took out that supply truck because Charles has completely targeted it. In comes a JU87G1. Looks like he's targeting the Jagdpanzer. Does get the kill there. There is a Nimrod in the area. Oh, and a Fock Wolf down goes that JU87. Charles, I think rightly so, calls that Fokker Wolf away. And the Nimrod should take care of the ME 109s, make sure he gets away without them being able to chase. The Nimrod might actually pick up a kill here. In comes an ME 410 though. I'm imagining he's actually targeting that Nimrod. Yes, it did pick up the kill. Down goes one of the ME 109s. There is the ME 410 here. I'm sure that this is going to be attacking it. It does have the 500 kilogram bombs. I think Charles has pushed it forward to try and avoid that attack. I, I, I'm pretty sure Charles microed that forward to avoid the bombs. And actually, that was pretty good micro there. Wow, look at Sean now, pushing forwards from this position, further up north, looking to take another flag. 30 seconds left on the clock. There is going to be no way back for Charles. There's another two flags under threat. And... An interesting start to the fate of Finland patch. <laughs> yeah, there, there it goes. Sean captured another flag. Is he going to capture another one as well? Yes, he does. 17-7 for, for Sean now. There we have it. First game on the Fate of Finland patch. Sean picks up the victory. Congratulations, Sean. 35 minutes, 44 seconds. 3,400 kills or 3,500 kills to 2,500 losses. Congratulations, Sean. Commiserations, Charles. Let's have a look at the kills for Sean. The Panzer T-34 here will easily outmatch the Churans. That does allow him to pick up a couple of kills. And I think that that's what I was thinking at the start of this game. We didn't even really see a Tiger onto the field. Or I didn't catch one. But I think Sean had the advantage in the vehicle stakes. The JU-87 took out a number of Churans and the Jagpanzer 38T. I think the HS129s did struggle, but I think that's because they have a weaker armament. And there we have it. It's really hard to make note of the kills because there is just so much infantry killing infantry just back and forward that you kind of lose a uh, touch of the kills. But here's two important ones, the ME109. G6 has taken out two off maps. That was a lot of points lost there for Charles. And only two uses for the two planes. So only two out of six uses were made there. Let's have a look at some of the kills for Charles. Early on, I think this may be on the southern side. Uh, he did advance fairly well. I think we made a big thing about the infantry and as we're going through more infantry units are picking up you know double double and triple kills compared to Sean's infantry that were just killing one for one but but Sean has so much infantry that that's not too much of a problem for him there we have it First match in Fate of Finland on Zell. Congratulations, Sean. Commiseration, Charles. I will try and work on the interface a little bit. I don't know whether there's options available to me at this stage, but 
since the patch was released, Eugen have announced that they are working on the UI and the there are new options available, but they are going to allow you to return to the previous UI options as well, as far as I understand it. So things will kind of get back to normal over time. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's it for me for now. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I am Angry Birds. I will see you next time.